Two of the following videos are true while the other one is trash. Can you spot the fake? Let's begin. First up, grab a glass bottle with flat sides. This isn't sponsored, but the fact that I'm using an honesty bottle should tell you that this one is definitely real. Anyway, like you just saw, if you push the bottle up at the corner of the wall, it will stay. It's not even touching the black part of the door. When you're done letting the wall hold it for you, just grab it and you're good to go. Next up, here's how to make a vortex in water using a battery. First, add salt to the water. The salt makes the water conduct electricity better, which means when you add the 9 volt battery, current flows in the clockwise direction. Since the water molecules are polar, they're attracted to this flow of electron. It takes a bit of time, so I sped it up here, but it's pretty cool how strong it can get. Take a slice of lemon peel, then light a candle, and squeeze the peel onto the flame. This works because the peel contains an oil that is very flammable. You've seen all three videos now. Pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Alright, time for the reveal. If you thought this bottle video was real, well you'd be correct. Turns out you can't make a vortex with a 9 volt battery, I simply put the video in reverse. Hopefully you got that one right, but if not, it's time for round two. A slight nudge can easily make a regular ruler fall over the edge of a counter. However, adding just a few sheets of paper allows you to whack the ruler in half. If you remove the protective coating of a 2 euro coin by scratching the surface and then submerge it in water, some of the nickel ions from the coin will react with the water to produce a small amount of mildly corrosive nickel oxide. This solution is too weak to do any damage to most materials like glass, metal, or ceramics, but as you can see here, it is strong enough to go through a thin styrofoam plate. If you grab a lemon peel and squeeze it onto a balloon, the balloon will pop. <laughs> this works because a chemical in the peel called limonene dissolves a hole in the balloon, and it also works with oranges. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Believe it or not, having a few sheets of paper does actually allow you to snap a ruler in half, and lemons and oranges do pop balloon. That means this video was fake. It was actually acetone in the glass, not water, and acetone alone will break down the structure of styrofoam. Next up, it's time for round three. If you grab a straw and a potato, you'll notice it's pretty difficult to stab the straw through the potato. The straw is too weak to do anything more than scuff the surface. However, if you place your thumb on top of the straw, you can push it through much further. Your thumb traps the air inside the straw, so when you go to puncture the potato, the air compresses. Just like how the pressurized contents of a soda can makes the thin aluminum walls much stronger, the higher pressure inside the straw also makes it stronger. Receipts are pressure sensitive, so if you push down on them, you can draw black lines. This also means that if you place a receipt under a flat board and give it a bunch of wax like this, the area that experienced the pressure will turn black. If you light a candle and point a flashlight on it, you'll notice that the flame has no shadow. You've seen all three videos now. Pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. If you thought the receipt video was fake, you'd be correct. Receipts are color changing with temperature, not pressure. Now it's time for the final round, round four. Squirt a decent amount of ketchup into a container, then put a few scoops of baking soda in. After stirring it around for a while, you'll notice it's kind of orangey and a little bit bubbly. Then light a candle and all you have to do is pretend to pour and the candle will go out. This works because the vinegar and the ketchup reacts with the baking soda and one of the products is carbon dioxide which happens to sink in air. So when you're pretending to pour, the carbon dioxide is coming out and extinguishing the flame. Here's how to blow Jolly Rancher bubbles. Grab the worst flavor of Jolly Ranchers and put them in the microwave. Once heated, they should be a hot sticky liquid. After letting it cool down a bit since I put them in the microwave for way too long, I grabbed a metal straw and coated the tip with some Jolly Rancher. Then you can blow into the straw and bubbles should shoot out. That was a pretty bad angle, so here's another. Not gonna lie, it's not that easy and actually took me a few tries. If you do try this at home, please be extremely careful with the really hot Jolly Rancher. Here's how to make your own pop rocks. First start off with some food dye. I wanted to make some purple pop rocks, so I used a combination of red and blue. Next add sugar and mix it around, allowing it to clump. Pop rocks are just crystallized sugar with trapped pockets of carbon dioxide. That's why the next ingredient is carbonated water. The sugar is really good at absorbing some of the carbon dioxide of the beverage, and the last step is to boil off the remaining water. So I put it in the microwave for three minutes. You can tell it worked because adding a bit of water gets that signature crackling sound. You've seen all three videos now. Pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. All right, mixing baking soda with ketchup actually does allow you to extinguish candles. And although the signature crackling from Pop Rocks does come from the release of trapped carbon dioxide in the candy, this was absolutely not a real way to make Pop Rocks. This is what I did instead. Thanks for watching to the end. Subscribe for more.